Welcome back to DeHakim's Aviary. In this video, we'll take a look at two types of bee eaters that have just arrived in the aviary. They can fly even though they are still in the learning stage. What are the two birds? Let's see together. It's the aviary! Assalamualaikum guys. They are new residents of the aviary. They had only arrived two hours ago. And now they were this tame. Although, on the way, these birds often act fussy. What are the names of these birds? Chestnut-headed bee eater. Are they a couple? They're a pair. Can they fly freely? They can, but are they still learning? They are still learning. Let's try it right away. We have to get used to wearing gloves. Any color. But here we are used to wearing red. So, if we want to train birds, we wear red gloves and whistles. How to use the whistle? Just blow. We try to train them. Once they fly, will they come back again? Just try it. Really? Okay guys, let's try. This is the chestnut-headed bee eater. One, two, three. I am pleased. It's easy to make me happy. Their flying ability is still not far off. They train like boomerangs. If we want them to fly far, they have to fly over the aviary. No, they can run away. No, no, no. They will not run away. It was afraid they would run away. Let's go further. There is a unique technique to train birds to fly freely. If we put the glove on our left hand, we throw them with our right hand. So they will not feel left out. So, we release them using our right hand, then let them perch on our left hand. Okay, sorry. It was to make the birds not feel driven out. Okay, gini, gini, gini. Okay. Okay, great, my dear. Ready. One, two, three. I love it, I love it, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it! We reward them. Next, there is an enormous bird. What is the name? Blue-tailed bee-eater. Earlier, the bird was a chestnut-headed bee-eater. This is a blue-tailed bee-eater. Their physique is similar, but their color is different. That was surprising. How about we try an air attack? It can be tried. Air attack is a technique of feeding by throwing. In the wild, this is how these birds hunt. Wow! What does he usually hunt for? Flies. Right. B. In the wild, their food is bees. Let's throw the food one more time. Just throw the food with your right hand. Just throw normally. Why is he like this? He's been trained. Oh my God, mashallah! Here is your reward. Okay. Okay, good boy, good boy. With this, De Hakim's aviary officially welcomes two species of bee eaters that are as colorful as a rainbow. 
The first is chestnut headed bee eater or Merops leshenalsha. A bird about 20 centimeters long. The crown and nape are light browns. The eye strips are black. The throat is yellow with brown borders. The wings and back are green. The belly is light green. And the tail and tongue hair are blue. Unlike other bee eaters, the chestnut headed does not have two elongated central tail feathers. Whereas, the blue tailed bee eater or Merops philippinus has a long band on its tail. Their size is also more significant, with a body length of about 30 centimeters. There are blue under and above black stripes on their eyes, green crown and back, yellow chin, and brown throat. These two bird species can be found in South Asia to Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, with habitats in the near open waters up to an altitude of 1,200 meters above sea level. Both the chestnut-headed and blue-tailed bee-eater have some fantastic quirks. First, they can fly agile and cunning. They are even good at catching insects while flying. Their prey consists of insects that fly quickly, especially wasps, bees, and hornets. And what's more, their movements while flying are also very acrobatic. They will perch on high tree branches while observing their environment when looking for food. Their eyesight is very sharp to be able to see their prey within 100 meters. After that, they will dash to grab their prey. However, when preying on poisonous insects such as wasps, they will act with caution. They will not want to eat the prey before getting rid of the poison in the body of their target. To remove the poison from the wasp, they will rub the wasp's belly slowly against a tree branch with tight internodes. They will close their eyes during removing the poison so that the wasp venom does not get into their eyes. The second uniqueness is that they rarely bathe. Once they clean themselves, they would dip their bodies into a puddle before flying back up. That is if we assume they live in places with abundant water sources. If they happen to live in a dry habitat, they will clean themselves more often with dust or sand. Third, they have a habit of sunbathing while combing their fur. They even spend about 10% of their time each day basking with their backs to the sun while spreading their wings. The goal, namely, let the sun get rid of fleas or parasites from their bodies and fur. When sunbathing, they usually do it in groups. Fourth, they are birds that have a high sense of community. They will nest in groups and help each other. For example, when a mother raises her chicks, other birds will also help the mother care for her young until they are adults. The chestnut-headed bee-eater's nest is a narrow tunnel about one meter deep in a mound or sandy riverbank. Meanwhile, the blue-tailed bee-eater's nest is a hole in a heap of mud or soil. This is information about the two bee-eaters at De Hakim's aviary. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next episode.